Hi everyone, this is Evgeny and you're watching another video in LineGraph Advanced Series. Today we continue researching our tools topic and I will show you another way how you can reduce the number of tools to allow the LLM make more predictable decisions and better reasoning. So join me and let's look at that together. And one thing I wanted to mention before we continue. This video is supervised by Angry Cats. So if you are really curious what are those, check the merge below. And we continue. All right, today we are discussing the same problem we touched last time about the number of tools. And uh, just to refresh your memory, the main problem here, so the main issue is that when you provide too many tools to the model, it's really confusing for it. Why? Well, because you have a lot of descriptions of the tools, a lot of names, parameters, and, well, your model simply could be confused. There are a lot of development in this area, but still, it's a good idea to reduce the number of tools you're providing to your model. And last time I showed you the way how to reduce the number using the supervisor architecture, and today we are going to touch a bit different topic. We are looking at dynamically selected tools. So this time this will be a single, uh, single agent, but the idea that we can dynamically select tools that are really needed for specific user request. As previously, we are loading the MCP server and this one is GitHub. And so we have 73 tools there. And the example of the first one, we can see that add comment, padding review, and the description, some other parameters we are not interested in at the moment. Basically, the easiest way, just we have a single agent and we provide all the tools there, right? This is the classical setup. You, you probably saw it multiple times already. But again, what's the problem of this approach? Uh, well, first of all, we are adding, well, it's not controllable at all because we are adding MCP tools and just imagine in production, your clients, your users, they are going to add several MCP servers, multiple ones, and you are not controlling it. You have no idea what tools are there. And even as a symbol, a uh, single MCP, we have already 73, so it could be like hundreds of different tools enabled to the agent, and then agent will be really confused. So the idea we need to find a way how to reduce the number of tools. And this is the idea. We do have a user request and based on this request, we can decide what tools can be useful for this agent. And then we provide in model dynamically the reduced set of tools. So it's, uh, it's happening on dynamic nature based on the user request. So this is the main idea what we are trying to implement today. Which way we are doing this? Well, first of all, let's think about how we can reduce the number of tools. And uh, this is pretty easy. Uh, the usual way, what I'm saying this all the time, right? We can ask the model itself to analyze the user request and try to predict which uh, tools can be useful for processing the request. And for that, what we have? We have a model. We define the tool selection, which is a list of tools and we're providing a hint for the model that uh, which way this field should be filled in the call. We have the structured output model using this tool selection. And then we're defining the function that will be responsible for providing a list of tools. And here we are saying that uh, practically you're a tool selector agent and based on the user query and available tools provide us maximum tools that can be useful for this uh, use case. And then we are making an invocation of the model and returning tools back. All right, and uh, let's test it. So here we have the same user request we had previously in the previous video. And we ask in select tools by LLM, we, have, we do have a prompt and we have all the MCP tools, which are 73. So I'm running it. And look at that, we have several. Uh, in the scope of 73, only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tools were selected here. So it's get me a list commits, list, list different data, and get pull request and get issuer. So this is the way how this function works. Another interesting question, what should we do with the function, how we can dynamically inject it in, into our agent structure? And this can be done using runtime context. So this is something you can predefine uh, before the agent 
is being cold and this is very dynamic nature it's outside of the agent that's the key point here so what we are doing here we are defining a custom context class and it contains a list of tools and practically this will be this list right and we define a configure model function which uh, which has the signature of a standard thing from LangGraph. So it takes the state and it takes the runtime context. And what we're doing here, it's pretty simple. We're just uh, filtering out tools uh, by the runtime context tool. So if, if runtime context contains the tool name, then we keep it in the selected tools. And then we are defining the model uh, and we bind in tools to the filtered list. And, uh, well, practically that's it. The beauty of this solution, if you define this function with this signature, you can use it as a model provider. And we saw this in the first lesson of LangGraph Advanced. You can use this function as a model provider when you're constructing your agent. So what's happening here? Let me define it first. We're creating the agent. It's again the system message. We have uh, this create React agent high-level API function. We're defining all the tools still, right? Because this is standard, like it's kind of fixed already. But as a model, we're defining the name of our uh, function. And this is really beauty because if you think about that, the way how it works, it's kind of uh, two things at the same time and one thing uh, if I scroll, oh, let me compile this one maybe, and I will explain it to you. So what's happening here, when we define the tools to MCP tools, so here, this knot of tools, it knows about all the tools, like it could be hundreds, thousands even, right? But at the same time, it doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt us at all, because the model itself knows about only a restricted set. So what's happening here, a model knows about like seven functions or seven tools. And so it can invoke the tools only in list of the seven, ignoring all the thousands that tools is aware of. So this is the beauty of the core of the solution here. All right. So what do we have? We have uh, again model. We have our function configure model here, which we defined. And it returns the model binded to a filtered set of tools. And the rest is the same. That's pretty easy, right? This is the, the, the core uh, technique, how you can uh, use these dynamically selected tools. Which way we can run it? Let's go to the testing. And here we have a user request. So first step, we have to define the select tool names based on the user request and all the tools you have. Then we are creating a custom context with the filtered list of tools. And finally, we make an invocation for an agent. And here, the second parameter here is a context. And then we need to provide this runtime context. Right? So the agent stays the same all the time. The only difference is that you provide in different runtime contexts based on the situation. And practically, that's it. All right, then the output is pretty standard for our use case. We have a request, we have immediately tool call to getting me information about myself, then list comments. And then based on that information, the model was able to produce a report. But again, this is another way how you can dynamically reduce the number of tools based on your specific use case. All right, this is the end of the video. And I hope that you found something interesting and new for you. And it was me, Evgeny. I really appreciate that you're sticking with me until the end of this video. And we'll see each other in the next one about Lung Graph Advanced. So thank you. Take care and bye-bye.